Josh, if you would, please. Hey, everybody. Uh, please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic, republic that stands one nation under God, under God indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. And I will take it back from there. And this evening, I don't have much club business then to talk about our hybrid meeting. So I have good news and bad news, of course. Oh, I'm sorry, Wes, you had something, some club business for tonight? Well, I attended the uh, district conference. It's about 484 miles for me, uh, 384 miles. I attended, oh. it, it, was, it was interesting, it was, it was good, very, very good to attend an uh, actual conference for over once, for a while. But it was a bit of a bit of an exercise. It, it was um, it was a long trip. <laughs> what was it? I, I don't recall. It was in Huntsville, Alabama. Huntsville, that's right. Yeah. I knew it was somewhere north. I couldn't remember north of us. Okay, well, we are so glad you came. I mean so glad you went, and I'm sure you represented us down here in the Mobile region very well. And we're glad you went. Was there any takeaways that you want to share with us? It was good. It was just good to be there at, at a at a at an actual conference. Good. Um, well, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You know, it's always good to be around people that. That Isn't really, especially when you think about Toastmasters being a volunteer. It was, so painful. It was a bit, it was a bit, um, a bit grueling and dry, but it was, it was okay. It was, it was good. It was good. Good, good. Glad you enjoyed it. And I was just saying that for it to be a volunteer uh, organization where no one gets paid to participate. As a matter of fact, you paid to be a member. You know that people are doing things that they care about, things that they are passionate about. So that makes it even more interesting. It's not like a job conference or, you know, where I'm forced to go to talk about the, you know, year in budget or finance, you know, something like that. No, I did this all because I wanted to. So that makes it even more uh, interesting and intriguing to be around like-minded people. Carrie, you had your hand raised. I'd like to discuss uh, Woody's membership. And I checked the Toastmaster website to create his account because it said, uh, weeks ago, it said, uh, the website was down, but it should be back today or yesterday. So I checked it, but they said they extended till uh, 22nd. So it's almost the end of this month. So I don't, uh, so he, he paid from uh, May to uh, September, but um, I, I, it's unfair to oh. him because it's almost end of the, I mean, May 22nd. Right. Lost the whole month. month. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, and then no guarantee that Toastmaster website will be back on 22nd. So as soon as it come back and uh back uh, the website's back and uh, we we can adjust in your payment could be okay. uh, reimburse you or uh give you the credit toward the next uh renewal payment or something like that. So we so let, let me hold this until the uh, website come back. Okay. Did you deposit the check already or? Yeah, I already deposited oh. and um. Yes, okay. I already did, and I'm really ready to create your account um, as okay. soon as the website is I'm okay, available. just whatever, but, you know, probably you could just apply it to the next year or whatever, next period. Right, but it, my point is um, no guarantee that they be available even next month, so we well, never know. So that's okay. they, just wait till they come back, and then I'll adjust it. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Woody, for being understanding. And obviously, it sounds like it's a little out of our control at this point, but still frustrating, frustrating nonetheless. But Carrie, yes, I was wondering if if it's not, if it's, I don't know if it's just the website. I don't know, because I haven't been on Toastmaster.org in a couple of weeks now. But I was wondering if you need any help, we probably can reach out to either Crystal or either go to um, our director, um, what's his name? 
Oh my goodness. Who was that we had to reach out to about your speech? What is his name? Brandon O'Brien. Maybe we can get someone from a higher level that may can help us out if we have to go to that route. We can go, if, if it's just the website, nothing we can probably do about that. But I was saying, if it seems right, to, to mention us, I, I don't know. I think all we, if we really, really want to start a pathway, we could, or we could talk with uh, O'Brien, whoever. But if you can wait, um, probably it's good to wait. I don't think it's yeah. really months and months, but probably, hopefully, uh, they said um, come back on May 22nd. So, it's just a little more, about two weeks, less than two mm -hmm. weeks. So. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that, uh, Carrie. And thank you, Woody, for your patience. No problem. Okay. Our next line of business was our hybrid meeting. I did try to get it for this Monday, which was the second Monday of the month, like we had planned. But those meet <clears throat> that meeting room fills up very fast. So the application process was not yet approved when before it was taken. So just to give us a dry run, I still went ahead and reserved the room for next Monday, which I know is the third Monday of the month. But that's just for anybody that's willing to come out. We're gonna test the equipment. We're not gonna change the website on the international or on Easy Speak to show us meeting next week because we don't wanna confuse people. It's gonna be the second Monday of the month for right now as long as we can keep our spot at the library. And that too is a kind of iffy situation because we only can book for two months in advance. He said three months initially, but he only would accept May, which is the current month, and then two for two additional months, which was June and July. So in fingers that no one has taken it from August, and then I'll jump right back in there and I can get August. So every month you have to add a, add a month, which is kind of annoying, but we're going to try it until something else comes along. With that being said, we are definitely open for any suggestions. We have tried everything under the sun from restaurants to parks to uh, renting buildings. We've tried churches. We've done everything. So for, for the new people that may not be aware. So if you know of any meeting place that we may can use on a more long-term basis uh feel free to throw it throw it in the hat and uh we'll definitely check it out because again this is just a temporary fix so anyway that's it for that so i do have us booked for next week we can come in as early as 6 30 and take possession of the room the meeting will start of course as always at 6 45 and then by 7.45, we must be packing up and out of there because the library closes at 8 o'clock. So they do ask that we just be real punctual. And normally we are getting in and getting out. That's the only concern we have for. That is all the club. Oh, Wes, go ahead. You have some more business? Well, if we're having a meeting this Monday, I'll be there. Now, the thing, that is the Monday I normally host the coach training session. The training session is the 16th of May. Oh, However, no. what I'll try to do, I'm going to try to get somebody else to host the session in my place so that I can attend the meeting because I think it's important for me to attend that meeting, at least one meeting for Pete's sake. It's a two-hour drive, but it's worth it. Y'all are worth it. Oh, wow. It's still my Thank club. You. Thank you so much. Our next order of business, Wes, you're the best. Our next order of business is our executive meeting. And that will be the fourth Friday. I'm sorry, the fourth Thursday of this month. So let me make sure I give you that date. The fourth Thursday is one, two, three, four, the 26th. And that will be on this same log in on Zoom the 26th and that will be at 6 p.m. So, and we will keep them, I know we're getting ready to, we'll talk about that next. We're getting ready to change officers. So, but I don't see a reason for us to change our executive meeting. So unless someone comes in and decides or has a real good idea to move it to a different day, it will continue to be the fourth Thursday of every month at 6 p.m. on this Zoom account until further notice. So kind of go ahead and pencil that in on your calendars, if you will. And again, 
we have executive meeting, we do a dry run for a hybrid next week. And I think that is it for our club business. Does anybody else have anything else? Wes, did, did you raise your hand again or is that okay? Yes, um, I'm reminded of a, a monk and he said there was a, the chief monk was giving a, a presentation or it was an little presentation. Just a, it was just an inform, it was just an informal presentation to the group of mon monks as a, as a, as a, as instruction. Anyone? In fact, he was a former he was a former uh, member of the Swiss Army. He says, "If you want to have power, he says, if you want to have power, he smash his hand on the on 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 the desk." He said. Be humble. <laughs> Very good. If you now, want to have power, be humble. There's a reason I'm saying that. This has been a very active week. I, I hoped it would got a lot smoother than it had. It, 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 but it was very active. I normally don't rely on my notes, but I need to get some points across. So if I reach for some notes, I'm doing it in the spirit of humility because it's important for me to get, as a coach, as your coach, it's important for me to get certain points across. So maybe I won't need the notes, but I'm just throwing that out there. Hey, no problem. You don't even have to, you even have to announce that, Wes. We thank you and we appreciate you for being so consistent and so dedicated with your um, speeches and your encouragement. So thank you very much for that. And uh, if we don't have any other business, we will move the meeting right over to our Toastmaster for the evening, which is David, if you would, please. Thank you, Olivia. And good evening, everyone. I'm David and I'll be your Toastmaster this evening. And I think we'll start by reviewing the agenda. So could we, we'll go over our roles and we could start with the grammarian. Is that going to be you, Olivia, or John? So I will do the role of grammarian. Good evening, everyone. I am Olivia, and I will be your grammarian for the evening, which means I will be listening for the use of or the misuse of the English language during the speeches, whether they be prepared, pocket, table topics, responses, and the evaluation portion of the meeting. I will give my response, or I'm sorry, I will give my um, my report, thank you, at the end. Also, our word of the day to keep up with our theme is matriot. A matriot is a noun, and it is a woman who is the head of a family or tribe. That is the definition of matriot. Back to you, Table Topics Master. Thank you, Olivia. And we'll move on to our awe counter. If we could get the role for awe counter, I believe Carrie is our awe counter tonight. Good evening, everyone. I am your awe counter tonight. My role is to count how many times you use Peter word. Yes, Peter word. Confusing healer words with healing words, but healer words such as, uh, um, you know, such as, and but something like this during your speeches. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. And moving on, who is our timer this evening? Do we have one? We don't, but I can take on I, the role this time. I can do timer, I'll, I'll do it. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, okay. Well, then, okay. So I am David. I will be your timer this evening for our speeches and table topics. We'd like to time how long they take because it's important when you were communicating to be within a certain length of time, not to be too short or too long. For our speech tonight with Miss Mr. Wes Hillstrom, I think we're going to be five to seven minutes. So at five minutes, I will use these Frisbees. I'll put up a green Frisbee, which means we're at five minutes. At six minutes, I'll have a yellow Frisbee. 
and at seven minutes, I'll have the red Frisbee, which means it's good. And it's fine if you go a little over seven minutes, but it just signifies it's time to start wrapping up. Now for table topics, we generally give one to two minute speeches. So I'll use the same Frisbees, but I'll do them at one minute, a minute and a half and two minutes. And I think that would be all of our, well, no, we also have our speech evaluation, which is two to three minutes. So once again, I will have a green Frisbee for two minutes, uh, yell, yellow Frisbee for two minutes and 30 seconds and the red Frisbee for three minutes. And that's how I will be doing the timing this evening. And moving on, now I'm back to Mr. General Evaluator. I mean, table topic, Toastmaster. That's what I am tonight. I'm very <laughs> confused. OK, can we have the role of our table topics master, please, which I believe is Mr. Woody Harrison? Yes, OK. The table topics basically is a portion of the meeting where the table topics master comes up with topics and he either he or she either assigns or calls on you to see if you can speak on a topic for one to two minutes or in some cases they ask for volunteers it's usually a fun part of the meeting because it, it's called impromptu speaking where you basically you speak off the top of your head which is a little challenging sometimes that you know you're not reading anything you're just speaking off the top of your head it's really good practice for or speeches and really is good at helping you just learn how to be conversational and so forth. So basically it's called impromptu speaking. You just, you don't know what's coming your way, but you respond to it. And basically I've always found it to be, most Toastmasters I've found enjoy this portion of the meeting. And uh, so hopefully we'll have some fun. Thank you, Woody. And finally, I think we should have the role of general evaluator explained. Will that be you again, Olivia? Okay. Yeah, good evening, everyone. I also have the role tonight of being a general evaluator. I will give my analysis on the meeting, how it flowed, the roles and how everyone performed or how everyone achieved in their position. And I will do that at the end before it is turned back over to the Toastmaster. Thank you, back to you Toastmaster. I also will go over, I will call on my team of speech evaluators, the timer, the all counter and the grammarian to have them announce their roles as well. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. And I think that completes our review of the agenda. Olivia has already given us the word of the day, which is matriarch, matriarch, and so now we can move to the next phase of our meeting, which will be our speeches. I believe we have one speaker this evening, Mr. Wes Hillstrom. And Mr. Wes will be giving a speech on effect. He's on the, using the effective coaching pathway. He's on level five. It's high performance leadership. And the purpose of this speech is to deliver a speech to introduce a plan and vision of a project that will be completed with a team or at least three other members. So the meeting is now yours, Wes. Thank you. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, Hilltoppers Toastmasters has been in existence since February 1st, 1961. And during that time, Hilltoppers has provided, has been the means for many Toastmasters to gain skill in communication and leadership. And in that, in that way, it has given a, uh, developed a, uh, an impressive legacy. And has made, faced many challenges in recent years due to COVID and also the switch over from the legacy program to pathways. That was a bit that caused some consternation. I, I do know among many Toastmasters, we got through that. Now we're entering into a, another phase of our existence. Through this all, we have maintained where we are, we are club in good, good standing. We have maintained membership as a club in good standing. But I think that we 
can do better than that. I believe that we are that we are capable of, of, of achieving the distinguished club status. And why is that important? It's important for a number of reasons. In achieving distinguished club status, members can members contribute to a common effort. In contributing to, to a common effort, they're also developing skills in communication and leadership, which they can take on club roles and also eventually club roles within the meetings and also leadership roles as club officers. And the club officers learn to work together in leadership training, make sure that they attend TLIs, they help each other to keep posted on TL, different uh, times of TL, TLI training. In short, that is a means, working toward distinguished club status is a means for developing a certain club esprit de corps, a certain club team spirit within the clubs. It's a very supportive environment. Now my project requires me to work with a team of members of the team of a guidance committee. What better guidance committee would I have than the club officers of Hilltoppers Toastmasters? We have a high spirited president. We have a vice president of education who is a distinguished Toastmaster, the highest level that you can achieve in Toastmasters. We have a secretary that's very innovative in coming up with moments of truth. And we have a multi-winning, a multi-award winning secretary. We have the best among the best. So I'm privileged to have as my guidance committee, this team member, these team members. Now, Zoom environments are, are good. They have many advantages. You can speak, I, I've spoken to Toastmasters at a meeting in India, in Spain, in, in different parts of the world. But there's something that's missing. What's missing is the close personal contact. A cup of coffee on a Zoom meeting just is not the same as having a cup of coffee face-to-face -face at a meeting. We now have that. Thanks to the efforts of our club president, Olivia, we have the ability to have Zoom meetings. So this is something we have a, we can take advantage of. There, that opens up ways for us to market our club. We can contact former Hilltoppers from the Carpe Diem days. They might be very interested in joining Toastmasters again. We could post flyers in Carpe Diem, in the library, and the places throughout Mobile to say, hey folks, Hilltoppers is back. Hilltoppers is here. We're here for you. We can help you to develop communication leadership skill. We can organize open houses. We can ensure that we have well-organized meetings with at, with at least one speaker. and hold a regular executive meetings. We can also invite guest speakers. You remember Peggy Hill? You remember Susie Proctor? They were fantastic speakers. We can continue to invite guest speakers. But we can do, do innovative things among our, ourselves. We can have panel discussions. There are a number of things that we can do in a hybrid environment. We can have an op open house. I'm proposing to bring refreshments. I will bring a cooler of refreshments and snacks as a sna as the snack master to our next meeting. So there are a number of things that we can do, but I do believe that we are well capable of achieving distinguished club status. We're very close to it with, with, with respect to membership points. We have three full points. We're about to get a fourth. 
we're we're one level away from the fifth. It's within our grasp. We can do this. We've done this before. We can do this now. We can. This Hilltoppers team can be the team that brings us to distinguished club status. It's achievable, and we can do it. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Wes, for that encouraging speech. And I completely agree that Zoom is great. And I think that's the world is going more for online meetings, but it's also critical to learn in-person skills. There's just, there are two different worlds and we need to live in both of them. So doing hybrid meetings is a great idea. And moving on to our next section, I think that was our only speaker for this evening. So we'll move on now to table topics. And I will turn the meeting over to Mr. Woody Harrison, who will be our Table Topics Master. Okay, thank you very much. I think we were kind of wanting to talk about mothers and matriarchs uh, this evening. So we'll try to keep it in that vein. So would anyone like to tell me about the matriarch of their family and what that matriarch has meant to them? Do I have any volunteers? Okay. Okay, Wes. Well, the matriarch of my family, of course, was my mom. She was a very special lady. Ah. That is my mom. Oh. That is my dad. Cool. That picture was taken shortly before my dad got his invitation to join the army. And he was in a very highly trained unit. And he developed, when he came back from the army, he had a drinking problem, he developed PTSD. And, um, He was a wonderful guy, I mean, a wonderful man, top of the line. My mom and dad were both, I, I wrote my father's memoirs is online for the, for the 96th century division. I wrote them online. And about the last thing, one of the last statements I read, I, I said was, to my last day, I will thank God for allowing me the privilege of being my mom and dad's son. But my dad was a very uh, uh, commanding personality, very, very much a leader. My mom was a very gentle, angelic, petite being. But she did a lot to hold the family together. Uh, my, my, my father got, got recovered from his alcoholism and uh, helped many others to achieve sobriety. But through it all, my, mo my mother was, the, was just this tower of strength, this precious uh, angelic being. I see my father with tears in his eyes, praising my mom. And so I, I have a great deal, I, to my last day, I will have nothing but respect for my mother and my father. And they're both, they were both top of the line. The strong expansion. Thank you so much. Okay. And keeping with the same type thing, Olivia, would you like to say anything about the matriarch of your family? Did you have one? Who was she? And what did she do? And et cetera, et cetera. Good evening, everyone. My question is talk a little bit about the matriarch of my family. And I would have to say it started with my maternal grandmother because my paternal grandmother died when I was very young. I do remember her, but not very well. I think I may have been about five or six when she died. So my maternal grandmother was, I could 
mimic what Wes was saying about being amongst an angel. I truly believe that her and my mother, which is her oldest child, were both angels sent straight from above. So my grandmother was very quiet, very soft-spoken, but she demanded respect. So when you came in the room, I remember I got one spanking when I was six years old because she asked me to do something and I kind of slightly stomped my foot like, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and she said, what did you say? Come here, Bryna. Oh, my first name is not Olivia, of course. So come here, Bryna. And I was like, yes, ma'am. And I was so hurt, not from the spanking because I promise it didn't it didn't hurt at all, but my feelings were hurt because my grandmother, I angered or I upset her. So for that purpose, because she was such a sweet, gentle spirit, the last thing I wanted to do was have her upset, especially with her baby girl. So that was probably the most matriarch thing that I remember about her being so gentle, but very commanding. She commanded or demanded that respect. My mother was right behind her, although my mom went into a coma when I was nine years old. She didn't pass until I was 15. So from the time that I can remember my mom up until I was nine years old, she was just an angel, just beautiful. I've never heard her get angry. I never heard her raise her voice. She never smoked a cigarette or drank, not saying anything's wrong with any of that for whomever. I'm just saying the mother that I knew, she was just perfect. She even always smelled real good. So that was the matriarch for me is my mother and my grandmother, oh my, my mother's mother. Back to you, Mr. Woody. Toast. Thank you so much. Excellent. 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 Okay. Okay. Let's see. Tyler, would you like to say anything about the matriarch of your family? Did you have one? And do you have any fond memories of your family matriarch? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the matriarch of my family probably starts with my maternal grandmother as well. Um, she's, we always had kind of family gatherings at uh, my grandparents' house. And she'd always you know, lay out everything and She's just always been there for everybody. And then uh, my mom also is kind of plays a big role in my family, of course. And uh, she's just great, absolutely great and super caring. Um, and yeah, you know, just the best. Couldn't ask for anything more. Very good. Absolutely. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Keeping along with the same theme. Carrie, did you have a maternal influence in your life? And would you like to say anything about this individual? Good evening, everyone. <laughs> My memory of Medriac. I would like to share with you is my grandmother of my father's side. She died at age of 88. Before, when she was, you know, I was young, I was a child. She was very tough, very tough woman and strong woman. And so I thought she wouldn't die until somebody died, somebody killed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she died as soon as after her husband, my grandfather, died. My grandfather died at age of 94. She didn't really reach uh, even 94. She was still 88 and died. And I couldn't believe that. For me, grandfather is a first dead among my close family. But he was already 90, 94. I was kind of ready at that time, but I was not ready for my grandma, loss of my grandmother. Especially again, she was really tough and I thought she's not gonna die under somebody kill, but um, she died. And uh, she was, uh, I could call matriarch, but also so she died soon as after her husband. And so it's, kind of both side of her. Thank you. Back to you, 
Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Very good. Okay. Uh, how about Josh? Did you have a matriarch in your family or do you have any memories of a matriarch figure in your family that you'd like to share? Oh, absolutely. My mother is without question the matriarch of my family. Uh, she's the outgoing personality, uh, pretty much the glue that holds the group together. Uh, she was a kindergarten teacher for 38 years. She's been retired for the last roughly six or seven years, and she's active in the community, and she's still helping at the school from time to time, and um, we are very fortunate to have her around. That's for sure. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And last but not least, David, would you like to share a story about your matriarch or whoever represented your matriarch in your family? Sure. Thanks, Woody. For me, my mom was not the matriarch. I was an only child and my dad was a bit, uh, he, my dad's a real loving person, but he sort of ran the family and my mom was more of a follower. However, my grandmother, my mom's mom, was definitely the matriarch of her family. She raised nine children into adulthood as a single mother. And she was incredibly strong-willed and a strong person. She could do anything. She was, I wasn't, she wasn't scary, but, but I could tell she was a serious type. And I think you have to be that way in order to, to, to handle being a single mom, especially in that age and raising her children. But matriarch is an, is an interesting word because you know, men and women are both, of course, take on leadership roles. But I think a lot of times there's something about you know, the motherly love that is special and not everyone can pull that off to be strong and a leader and at the same time be loving and kind and caring but my grandmother definitely did i mean my grandmother cared about me and loved me but at the same time she w had the ability to bring our family in to, into success because she my grandmother just had a high school education and did the best she could but her children really succeeded so the men most of them went into the military she had five daughters and four sons and the daughters we're all successful and, and had a good life. So it's, it's, it's been an amazing experience to, to see that. And that would be the matriarch and, and my family. So thank you and back to you, Woody. Well, thank you all very much. Everybody did a great job. I appreciate all of your wonderful responses. And I could tell all of you had matriarchs and they had a huge influence in your life. Yes. Woody, I was just going to say, we can't let the meeting continue without you telling us about your matriarch. Okay, I can do that. The matriarch to my family was my mother. My mother was a very social person. So she put together all the Thanksgivings, all the Christmases, birthdays. She had lots of friends. She was a huge cook. She cooked Southern food. You know, she did fried chicken, turnip greens, you know, had big, huge meals. She would have all the family over, including her sister and all of our cousins. We had huge meals, for, I mean, holidays. So she was definitely the matriarch. She organized, you know, like I say, Thanksgiving, Christmas, birthdays. And she really held the family together. Uh, unfortunately, she passed away uh, about seven months ago. But I, I kind of get the feeling that my oldest sister will probably take on that same role. But it was my mother, and, and you know, she she was a very friendly person, had a lot of friends, very social, and she she basically had that role down pat, and, and um, had a lot of good times with her. Anyway, so that's that's my matriarch. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, we can pass it back to our toastmaster. Oh, yes, yeah. at, at this time, I'll relinquish the lectern back to our. Our Toastmaster. Yes. Thank you, Woody. That was a great table topics session. I love that everyone got to share. I think that's important. I'm glad Olivia asked you to share as well. And so moving on, we're we're okay on time, I think. We'll yes. move straight on to our evaluation section sec phase of the meeting. 
And our general evaluator is Ms. Olivia Carter, and I will turn the lectern over to Olivia. Good evening, everyone. I am your general evaluator for this evening, but I also have the pleasure of being the speech evaluator for our prepared speech tonight, and that was given to us by our club coach, Wes. Wes, if you would allow me, I will evaluate your speech at this time. Here are my notes, and of course, they disappear as I get ready to say them. Okay, so the title of your speech was In Breaking embracing distinguished club status. It says here, what did you excel at? Well, it says notes for the evaluator is, it says the about the speech, the member will deliver a well thought out plan and an organized engaging speech. The speech could be humorous, informative or presented in any style that the member chooses. The style should be appropriate for the content of the speech. The speech should not be a report on the content of a high performance leadership project, but a presentation about the members' goals and plans. So, and that's just what this speech was about, embracing distinguished club status. Wes, you excelled at explaining or defining the importance of being a distinguished club. You gave pointers on why it should be important for all of the members. You also gave ways in which we should develop or enhance our weekly meetings, as well as ways to promote our clubs to the general purpose. I saw a great use of vocal variety in there because for one reason, I saw your passion. And I just always have felt like when you are doing something that you are passionate about or speaking, I don't care if it's cutting the grass. If you are passionate about what you're doing, it shows up in the way that you do it. And whenever you talk about being a distinguished club, being a club coach, about being a member of Toastmasters, Toastmasters in general, you always have an external and internal smile that just exuberates. So I saw a great deal of vocal variety as well as hand gestures. Those were two of the things that we have mentioned in the past that you may want to work on. This time for what you may want to work on or ways to challenge yourself, I just really left those positions blank at this time. I think your speech was well thought out. I was well engaged and I understood and recognized the importance of it throughout the whole thing. So for clarity, I gave you a four for excelling. Vocal variety, I gave you a four because I really did see an, in a change in the vocal variety, especially when you started getting excited, I could hear it in your voice. Your eye contact, we're using Zoom, so I could tell that you were looking around the room, I gave you a three. For gestures, I did see a, uh, some hand gestures being used, I gave you a three for that one. Three means accomplished. Audience awareness, I gave you a four for excelled. Comfort zone level, I gave you a five because you are definitely very comfortable in, and five is exemplary. And then for your interest, did you engage the audience with interesting and well-constructed content? For that, I gave you a four. That is my speech evaluation. I've already typed it up. And Wes, I will send it to you at the end of tonight's meeting. Back to, oh, me, general evaluator. Okay, let's call on our other roles. So can we get our timers report? And David, I'm sorry, I did not think to time your response. So hopefully you were able to do your own time. I do apologize for that. But if you can give us, give us our timers report, please. Sure, thank you, Olivia. I did time myself, so that's not a problem. For our timers report, we'll start with our prepared speech, which was done by Wes. That speech was six minutes and 48 seconds. Moving on to our table topics. Our first table topic was also by Wes. And that was timed at two minutes and 20 seconds. Our second table topic was by Olivia at two minutes and 10 seconds. Our third table topic was Tyler at 44 seconds. Our fourth table topic was Carrie at one minute and 32 seconds. Our fifth table topic was Josh at, I have 29 seconds. Table topic number six was me, David. I had myself at one minute and 57 seconds. And our final seventh table topic was Woody. 
And I have Woody at one minute and two seconds. For the only other timed event was the evaluation, which I'll give Olivia three minutes even for her evaluation. And that is Amazing. all of the time reports. So thank you. And back to you, Miss General Evaluator. All right. Thank you very much for that, David. And very good on our time across the board with everyone. Next, we will talk about our grammar for this evening. Josh, did you do the, you did the grammarian report, correct? Josh, was that your role? Well, you it, it, but, but you, you told David you were grammarian. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's okay. Cause I did the grammarian report and the all counter and the word of the day. So no big deal. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. I got a little ahead of myself because I did have you down for that. And then I have it next to my name. Okay. So very good. Wes, for your speech, I had no misuse of the English language. I would just group this in with the all counter report and the use of the day. So for your prepared speech, I didn't get any filler words. For your, so very good for that. On your table topic speech, you had two R's. Wes, the word of the day, you used it at least twice. Correct me if I'm wrong. Next, we have Tyler. You had three R's, so very good for that. And you did use the word of the day at least one time. If you said it more than once, it was being said so many times, I could barely keep up. I was excited about that. Carrie, as always, you had no filler words. And your use of the word of the day was, um, was twice. Oops, I just got myself for a filler word. Josh, you used a uh, three times, and your use of the word of the day was at least once. David, you had no filler words, no misuse of the English language, and you used the word matriot at least three times. Olivia, I just caught myself for an, a filler word, and my use of the word of the day was also two times. Woody, you had no misuse of the English language. You had no filler words. And oh my goodness, I think you used the word of the day about seven times, but you introduced that question over and over again. Tell us <laughs> a bit about your matriarch of your family. So that was perfect. And I just want to, okay, so I wrapped up. I think I went over all of our reports that we had to do. So I will give my general evaluation. We were all here. Thank you, by 6.45, we took a few minute recess while we continued to gather up our roles. So that was not bad. At least we were all here and everyone knew what their role was gonna be by 6.45. We did recess until 6.50. I was gonna say about using the word of the day or anything that we're trying to learn. One of the best ways to learn is through repetition. So constantly using, saying, whether it be whatever it may be, when you do it over and over again, it becomes a habit. So very good for that, for the use of the word of the day. Thank you very much for your line of questioning, Woody. It was very simple, but it was so inviting. If I don't know, we have to go back and look at the video, but I was watching. And when everyone spoke of the matriarch of their family, you guys set up kind of strong. Some of you even kind of moved around a little bit. I saw a movement in the shoulders. Some people even just, you appear to be a pep in your step, even though we were sitting down. And there was a smile. No one spoke about the matriarch of their family without having a smile on their face. So that's what it's all about. And that's one of the good things about having a theme. It kind of gives everybody something to to look forward to a topic so we'll know how the meeting is going to flow or what the topic will be about now will everyone like everything absolutely not but at least you will have something to be prepared for so thank you for letting our table topics be in line with our theme i think that is it for my general evaluation and i will turn it back over to you mr table topic i'm sorry toastmaster david Thank you, Olivia, for that wonderful evaluation. And thank you for taking on all these roles this evening. I think we had a really good meeting as well. And thank you, Wes, for your speech and Woody for the table topics. We, I think Toastmasters is a great place to learn skills, communication skills. I've really developed quite a bit, especially avoiding using filler words and using silence as a 
communication tool, as well as giving speeches. So it's a pretty cool thing. And the beautiful thing about Toastmasters is we can do this in an environment where if we screw up or mess up, it's fine because this is just practice. So it's, it's something I wish I had thought of doing earlier in my career. I'm kind of old now, but it's been a really wonderful experience. And that's all I have as Toastmasters. I believe we do not have an educational overview this evening or any awards that I'm aware of. So I will turn the meeting back over to our president, Olivia. All right, thank you very much. And uh, David, that was a very good Toastmaster evaluation of tonight's meeting. And I thank you all for that. I just want to put, we don't have any club business. So I'm sorry, we don't have a education overview, but I just felt like this was just something that was worthy of being I don't think it'll be education for any of us, but just a topic that, you know, hey, pass it on to someone else. You can work and do a whole lifetime of good. And if you make one bad choice, you can ruin your whole life. And I'm just thinking about the Vicky and Casey, the two that have been on the run for a little over a week now. And this woman had an upstanding reputation in the correctional office, I mean, in the prison system that she worked in here in Alabama. She sold her house, put in for retirement, made the last day of her work, the day that she chose to take the convict, the, I mean, the, the prisoner out, and all that for just a week and a half of being on the run. And now everything is, is ruined. I don't think she's going to bounce back from this. At least it won't be anytime soon. So it's just, I don't know. I like to take those little moments of information and I use them when I'm talking to younger people and or when I'm trying to just speak an encouraging word to the youth and like, hey, do you see this? One mistake a big mistake, but one mistake, and it's just now her whole everything. She will always be known as the woman who took the six foot nine giant out of the prison and ran off for a week and a half. So I tell you, I just always try to take, take a moment to make good choices. If you just stop and think, make good choices, please. None of us are perfect, but man, I sure hate to see that she's ruined her life like this. So that was just my education overview for this evening because I see they have been caught and they're in custody and all of that. And I'm just wondering what's going through her mind. Make good choices. That's all I want to say. Wes, I see you have your hand raised. Well, I, I, yeah, I do have, yeah, I have something to say, but... Um, I would say, with respect to relationship to God, I I can't really say that her life is over. Maybe she I I I I don't know what to say, but I mean, all, all I'm saying is that God is very merciful. Oh yes, yes, and, and, and I get and, that. Mm -hmm. And. Perhaps she'll be provided a lesson that it's hard to put into words, but you know, I, I, I perhaps a lesson will be shown to her right. that's beyond our understanding. I don't know. Yeah, there's definitely redemption in anything. I do, I do firmly believe that all things work together for our good. So I, I definitely get that. But what I'm saying about when I say make good choices and let it be a learning experience for someone else, maybe her mistakes. I didn't mean that her life was over. I mean, life as she knew it, she would never be known as the woman who spent, you know, had an outstanding career in the correctional facility and she retired and, you know, and everyone just... That's not the legacy that she's going to leave behind at this point. And that's what I mean by her life is not ruined, but her oh, life yeah. has never changed. She will always be known as what she's what she did a week and a half ago, which was walk the prisoner out of a state penitentiary. So, so unfortunate because I really believe she was probably an awesome person. I really do. And she just got caught up. So uh, that's why I just always say stop and think, stop. Try to play the tape all the way through. What can be the worst outcome? And it's something that I'm willing to live with. That's just one of those things that I speak to my young audiences whenever I get a chance. Okay, but I'd like to say that, could you please check on 
on the library, is it possible, to re is it permissible to bring snacks and refreshments in the library? If so, I will bring a cooler with water, refreshments, and I will have snacks. Okay, and I you, will, you, I will, I put okay. no when asked that question, will we be having snacks? But it is permissible. So I just have to let them know ahead of time. The most important thing that the library cannot, that they don't want us to do is be able to charge for anyone to come in and it must be open to the general public. So, and that's gonna be a great thing for us to advertise because they want us to make it known what we're doing in there. And also, is it open for someone to come in and sit in and watch? So um, I don't see, there, there was no stipulations against having refreshments. It was just questioned and I said no. So definitely I'll check on that and hopefully we can. And I'll definitely also bring refreshments as well. And I'm going to invite a guest, so I need to know the exact address. You know, okay, you know. address, guest, refreshments. Gotcha. And um, yeah, and, and and if you want to, if you want to make it into an open house or something of that nature, wonderful. Yeah, well, like I said, next week is going to be our drive runs. So we can get the lay of the land and kind of see how things are looking, how it plays out, how well the Wi Fi works. I'm sure it's going to be great. So, just want to just make sure that we have everything, all systems to go. So, I'm kind of glad that we're getting this drive run this, this month. So, June, we'll be able to post yeah. on our Facebook pages or wherever our social media pages that we are having hybrid meetings and we'll know without a shadow of a doubt about how well things will go. Yes, yes, yes sir. Yes, yeah, so that's right. It's a dry run, and 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 dry runs with Zoom meetings, there could be glitches. So right. be prepared. You be warned. Right. Right. Uh, do I have anyone? Just so I will know off the top of my head, do do we have anyone that is going to plan to be there? Not necessarily. It can't be etched in stone. It doesn't have to be. But does anyone by myself and Maurice plan to be there next next Wednesday? Okay, I know we have Wes, okay, myself, and I know Maurice. Okay, very good. So it'll be enough of us there. It will still definitely be on Zoom. So you guys that are not going to come, just please be sure and log in. Go ahead, David. Uh, I should be able to make it as well. And also, I, I have the banners from the Hilltoppers Club. So I'll bring awesome. those with me as well. Oh, that'd be awesome. Awesome. So I do plan on being there maybe around about six o'clock so I can talk to Mr. Richie. That's the person that we're going to meet with. So I will look around and see if we have a place to hang our banner, if they'll let us hang it outside and stuff like that. So I do plan on being there a little early. So anybody can get there around 630 just to help us get set up and situated. That'd be great too. I'm looking forward to it. Wes, I just, I don't know. My heart just goes out to you for being so uh, dedicated to drive two hours. We thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. And I will definitely be glad to finally meet you in person. So if you're going to be there, I'm encouraged to be there as well. Thank you. All right, guys, let's be mindful of everyone's time. If all minds are clear, we are going to get out of here. Anybody else has anything? All right, good night. I, just, I will talk to you guys between now and Wednesday, next Monday. Yeah, Have a just, good one. I just want to say thanks oh. to Tyler for joining us this evening. I don't know if you've been here before, but we're glad to have you with us. Oh, I'm so sorry. David, would you take a few seconds to tell, tell Tyler a little bit about yourself? Carrie, you were on when he was here last week, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so we've all introduced ourselves. So David, if you would just tell us a little bit about yourself. When did you become a Toastmaster sure. member and any good thing about Toastmaster you want to add to Tyler? Yeah, I joined Toastmasters in the fall before the, I think the fall of 2019. So I've been two and a half years, something like that. If I'm, I sh I'm a civil engineer, so I should be good at math. But I work for the Alabama Department of Transportation, which is this hat here as a civil engineer for almost 30 years. And I'm retired from that. I was looking for some things to do. And Carrie got involved with Toastmasters. She carries a good friend of mine. And so we started going to the Hilltoppers and it's been a pretty cool thing. It's uh, really learned quite a bit and, and met a lot of people. When we were meeting in person, we had quite a few people would come. And so it was a good way to network as well. So, so that's about it. Just, and most of my life I've been as a typical engineer, kind of introverted, but so this is something, a way of getting me out and forcing me to be around people so but it's worked out really well 
So, and I, and I just, the, the group has become like a family to me. So I'm glad to be here. So thank you. That's it. Thank you. That was a very quick impromptu, but very thorough introduction, uh, Dave. So we thank you for that. All right, guys, the time is now 7.50. So we're going to close this meeting out. Does anyone else have anything else before we do so? All right, take care. See you Monday at 6.45. At, I'll send you the address at the Greelot Mobile Public Library. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye.